Namaste, Manduka family. Danielle Karuna here from Los Angeles, California, where I teach at a studio called Love Yoga, and I also work a lot with private clients. Currently, I'm also teaching tons of classes online. You can find me and my schedule at Danielle Karuna on Instagram and also my website, www.daniellekaruna.com. I'm also a very proud Manduka ambassador. This practice today is going to be a really grounding and really centering practice. For the practice, if you have two blocks, you can grab your blocks. If you don't have blocks, no problem. You can grab anything that is block-like, uh, just something that could potentially bring the earth a little closer to you. And if you don't have blocks, no problem. You could always just do um, the practices a little higher up on your fingertips rather than grounding the whole palms down into the surface of the earth that we're connecting to. And I also right now have a blanket beneath my seat. So I highly recommend grabbing a little bit of elevation for your base right now as we begin, because we are going to start with a seated grounding practice. And it's quite nice to have that little elevation so that the knees are lower than the hips. When this is the case, knees a little lower than the hips, then uh, the, the hips can release and can relax. And when we sit a lot, it puts the body into flexion, which can also keep the body in a state of uh, fear or fight, flight, and freeze. It, it can activate the sympathetic response um, because we're closing ourselves off. When we are scared, we tend to curl into ourselves. It's like we're uh, protecting the vital organs. And so flexion is um, often a response to fear. Not saying that the sitting is fear-based at all, but um, it can have that same response in the nervous system. So as we sit, we're working towards having the knees a little bit lower than the hips, just so the hips can start to relax and the nervous system can start to calm down. So with that, you'll just take a moment to find a comfortable seat with the knees a little lower than the hips. Your spine is straight. You can feel a bit of connection through the perineum, the front body, and a bit of reaching back through the tailbone. So you find the natural curvature of your spine. Ideally, you come a little bit into that perineum in the front body so you're not sitting back in your tailbone and rounding the back and coming into that flexion that we're working against. So coming to the front of yourself, lifting the sternum, opening across the collarbones, opening your chest, energetically opening the heart. And then you can let the hands rest on the lap or on your thighs, however it feels comfortable to let the hands rest. And gently pull the chin back so the ears align over the shoulders. When we look at screens or our phones or even just looking at a book or looking down at a recipe, I've been checking out lots of recipes lately, uh, it's typical that we bring our head a little forward to get closer to that which we're looking at. And the more the head position comes forward, the heavier the head becomes and the more it pulls on the chain of the spine. And so as we practice, we really want to draw the chin back, almost like you're giving yourself a bit of a double chin. It may feel like that. It may even look like that. And you want to align the ears over the shoulders so you re-elongate through the entire spine, specifically focusing on your neck area, your cervical spine, so that the weight of the head comes off and then you can find more space in the vertebrae and more openness in the discs. So we're just looking for space and length in the body. And make sure the tops of the shoulders are relaxed. And just taking a moment now in this seated position to notice what you notice, to really check in with yourself. Noticing 
how the physical body is feeling. Noticing the content of the mind. The quality of the thoughts. Checking in with your emotions. Really honestly assessing how you're feeling. And we want to train ourselves to take off the mask and our public persona as we come to our practice and we are in the privacy of our own homes. And so as you check in with how you're feeling, be honest with yourself. You don't have to put up that false front of everything being okay. Right? This practice is not about bypassing the feelings. It is about allowing for the full spectrum of all that we feel and welcoming all that we are. And remembering also that change is the law of the universe. Nothing stays the same for very long. We are in constant change. Even if we don't see it on a large scale, microcosmically, everything is changing. And one of the ways that the feelings and the thoughts can change, if that's your desire, is by fully embracing them as they are. So just welcome whatever it is you're feeling and whatever it is you're thinking. All is permissible. All is okay. Do not eschew or shun any part of yourself. And so feel yourself welcoming everything that you notice. Welcoming all that you are. And welcome yourself to the practice. And in honor of this law of the universe, the law of change, we're going to chant to Shiva today, Om Namah Shivaya. When we chant to any of the deities or the um, goddesses in Hindu philosophy or the Vedanta philosophy, where yoga came from, uh, it's important that regardless of our s religious or spiritual beliefs, we come to an understanding that when we're chanting to any of these gods or goddesses, it's not sacrilege. We're not really chanting to anything that is separate from ourself, but rather honoring these different aspects, these different energies uh, that are in oneself. And so Shiva in the trinity of Hindu gods is the destroyer. There's Brahma, the energy of creation. There's Vishnu, the energy of sustenance. And there's Shiva, the energy of destruction. Right? And we can see these forces operating within us and within our lives all the time. There's always beginnings. There's always that uh, middle point of things where things are just status quo. And then if something has a beginning, for certain it will also have an ending. And an ending is not a finite thing. An ending is also a door to a new beginning because everything operates in cycles. Everything is cyclical. So another way to understand the energy of Shiva, the energy of destruction, it's not morbid and it's not destruction for the sake of destruction. Uh, when something breaks down or it falls apart, it's also the seedling for something new to be born. So the energy of destruction is also the energy of transformation. And so we can understand Shiva to be honoring that energy of change that is in constant action all the time. Things are changing all the time. And we have to practice welcoming the winds of change. If we try so hard to grip on to uh, what was or what is, then we, uh, then we fall out of the flow of what will be. 
And so we practice welcoming this Shiva energy, welcoming the winds of change and honoring it as the law of all, all things. And so sitting nice and tall, you're welcome to sing along or you can just listen. Om Namah Shivaya. I humbly welcome the different seasons of my life, the different seasons of the world, the winds of change, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the ins, the outs, the peaks, the valleys, the joy and the sorrow, the confidence and the insecurity, right? Everything is changing. Welcome it all. That is life. It is that uh, full experience, the polarity of things going one way and things going the other way. And that fullness, that polarity is the richness of life. So we welcome it. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And a deep breath out of the nose. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. For the sound of Om, take a deep breath in. Om. Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya For the sound of Om, one more time, deep breath in. Not rushing the practice, but allowing yourself a moment just to sit and to notice. Paying attention to yourself once again. And then bring your hands to a prayer at your heart. And bow the head. So whatever you're in the middle of is not a forever thing. And that might seem good or that might seem bad, depending on whether you're in the middle of a high or a low. But for most of us, it's a mixed bag because we love what we love and uh, we don't want to feel anything 
hard or heavy or bad, but just honoring that everything is in constant flow, everything is in constant change, and it's not a bad thing, it is what it is. And in yoga, we believe that amongst the backdrop of all these changes is something that stays the same. This we call the Atman or the true self. And it is why we can notice all the changes, why we have memory of all the changes. If everything was constantly changing, we wouldn't even remember the change. But because something within us stays the same, we can know the changes. And that something within us that stays the same is steady, is centering, is grounding, and is your true self. And so as we connect to that, right, as we work to know thy true self, the Atman, right, the abode of peace and joy, then it enables us to allow for all the changes to occur as they may, knowing that there's stability and steadiness and something always grounded within us that we have the potential to connect to. And for this practice today, we are going to connect with that. And so just feel yourself centering inside of your heart, feeling that even if you're in the midst of sorrow or a hardship, that peace and solace is always available. Not if you look outside, but if you take the time to journey in. And so just remembering that that is there can be the beginning of that journey. And as you're ready, we will go ahead and come forward onto our hands and our knees. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. And we're going to start with a couple rounds of cat-cow. So on an inhale, arch the back, lift the head, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the back, curl the chin to the throat. Inhale, arch the back, lift the head, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the back, curl the chin to the throat. Inhale, arch the back, lift the head, lift the gaze. And exhale, round, curl the chin to the throat. Inhale, come to a neutral spine. Reach the right arm up and back, open across the chest here. And then we're going to thread the right arm underneath the left, bringing your right shoulder, right side of the head to the ground. Right arm extends straight out from the shoulder, palm faces up. You can keep your left hand uh, close to you and push into the hand, rotating the vision up underneath the left arm. Or another nice option, extend the left arm forward and then rotate the vision up underneath the left arm. And then keep finding rotation around your trunk, spinning the right lung up and open towards the ceiling. Take one more full breath in and out. Inhale, take the left hand back beneath the shoulder if you extended the arm. Exhale, sweep the right arm up and back, open across the chest. Take the right hand down beneath the right shoulder. On an inhale, lift the left arm up and back. And then exhale, thread the left arm underneath the right, bringing left shoulder, left side of the head to the ground. Right hand can stay close to the left arm, or you can extend the right arm forward, Plug into the hand, spin the vision underneath the right arm. Keep wrapping your right hip back in space so your sacrum stays level. And then just rotate open. Get that nice twist around the trunk. One more full breath in through the nose. And a full breath out of the nose. If the arm is extended, place the right hand back beneath the right shoulder. Inhale, push into the right hand. Exhale, left arm reaches up and back. Look up to the thumb and then release the left hand down. Go ahead, tuck your toes, lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a couple moments here just to walk your dog. So you'll pedal the feet, reaching back through one heel and then the other. 
And just like that, starting to invite some more room into the back body. Stretching out through the Achilles, through the calves, through the hamstrings, through the hips, through the back, through the arms. You want to feel that more of the weight is reaching back into the legs than you feel in your arms. So really press into the hands to elongate through the spine and press the chest back and feel the strength and the stability of your legs. Now on an inhale, come forward to a plank pose, top of a push-up, wrist directly beneath the shoulders, heels kick back, quad muscles engage, belly pulls up and back to the spine. Try not to let your hips dip down, nor are they rising up. You're holding yourself nice and stable, nice and steady, connecting to the strength in your center. If this is too intense, you're always welcome to lower the knees here keeping the knees behind the hips so you're still primarily focused on centering uh, your, your strength from your core. Take one more deep breath in through the nose. Oh, so nice, guys. And then exhale, lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Soften your knees and walk your feet forward towards the hands. Take your time. Articulate the footsteps. You might get some good little cracks out of the ankles or in the feet. So many little muscles and bones in there. And then once you're all the way to the top, go ahead and rest the belly onto the thighs. And grab for opposite elbows and just let your whole upper body drip and drape down. So you're tractioning the spine. You're finding the buoyancy in between the vertebrae where those discs are simply by letting the weight of the skull surrender down. When we let the weight of the head come all the way down and the spine hangs down, it's a way to really traction the spine and create length where there's compression. So nice for the spine to hang. And then nodding your head yes, nodding the head no, nodding the head maybe, really letting the head drop down. And then let the arms release from here. You can either place the block beneath your nose and press the left hand into the block or you could be on your fingertips or you can ground into the palm. Bend the left knee a little bit and reach the right arm up. Look up to see the right thumb. Keep pulling your right hip back so you get length through both sides of the waist. And then we'll swim that right arm all the way forward and take the right hand beneath the nose where the left hand was. You can bend a little deeper into the right knee, reach the left arm up, and then spin the chest open. Good, deep breath in, deep breath out. One more, inhaling, and then exhale. You'll go ahead and you'll take the left hand down. Soften the knees, roll up to stand. Let your head remain heavy, rolling up to stand one vertebrae at a time. Once you're all the way up, roll the shoulders down the back and take a mountain pose, Tadasana, firmly planting your feet into the earth like you're staking claims on the space that you're in. You're staking claims on the body that you're in. So feel the feet plugging down and you um, f confidently and firmly standing inside the center of yourself. So really we're finding good posture in the body, awareness permeating throughout the body and activation. We're really activating all parts of the body so we energize ourselves. On an inhale, reach the arms overhead, gaze up to see the prayer. Exhale, bow forward, hands to the ground, Uttanasana, hinging from the hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine, open the chest. You can climb up onto the shins here to have a flat back. You can also bend your knees quite generously so the spine stays straight. And then release the hands to the ground. We're going to step, step back to a plank pose. And then whatever you're comfortable with, lowering towards the earth, halfway or all the way down, your option of a transition. Then on the inhale, we'll move away from the earth. Find a back bend for either low cobra or upward facing dog. Keep the vision forward. Keep the back of the neck long. Lift through your chest, widen across the collarbones. And then exhale, roll back over the toes, downward facing dog. 
deep breath in through the nose and a deep breath out of the nose. Two more. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees. Look forward. You can either walk or hop the feet forward if that's in your practice. Flat back once you get to the top. So again, you can bend those knees a little bit to keep a spine, a straight spine. And then exhale, release down into the legs. Uttanasana. Inhale, reach the prayer hands overhead. Urdhva Hastasana. Gazing up. Exhale, arms by the sides, mountain pose, Tadasana. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, gaze up as you press the feet down. Exhale, bowing forward, folding into the self, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen the spine, open through your chest, flat back. Exhale, hands release to the earth. You can step or if you have a floating practice, you're always welcome to take that variation. And then lower through your transition. Whatever feels nice coming towards the earth. Inhale, find a back bend behind the heart. Lift the chest. Exhale, pulls the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. If your body feels tight today, you're always welcome to keep a little bend in the knees in your dog. That's also a nice option if you want to get more back bend in the practice. Down dog is a, a mild forward fold and with a little bend in the knees, you also turn it into a little back bend. You get best of both worlds if you opt for that, but do what feels nice today in your body. Inhale, lift the heels high. Exhale, bend knees, belly onto thighs. Inhale, walk or float the feet to the top of the mat. Look forward. Exhale, fold down into the legs. Inhale, rise, reach the arms overhead, gaze up. Exhale, arms by the sides, mountain pose, Tadasana. One more Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, gaze up. Exhale, bow forward, ground the palms to earth, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back, halfway lift, open the chest here. Exhale, hands to earth, you can step or float back lower, Chaturanga or your choice of a transition. Inhale, find a back bend behind the heart, lift the chest. Exhale, pulls the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. If at any point you feel uh, you need to rest, honor that. If at any point you want to come into a child's pose or just take a seat, always using this practice to honor and listen to the body and not to defy it. Inhale, lift the heels high. Exhale, bend the knees, belly onto thighs. Inhale, step or float the feet forward. Look forward. Exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale, rise, reach the arms overhead. Gaze up to see the prayer. Exhale, arms by the sides. Mountain pose, Tadasana. From here, we're going to do a little bit of balancing because uh, finding our balance on one leg really helps us to find ground in different ways and with that, new ways of feeling grounded. So we're going to step into the right foot. You'll hug the left knee into the chest. You can take the right hand onto your right hip and open the knee out to the side. You can grab for the front of the ankle and place your left foot anywhere along the inseam of the right leg, just so long as you're not on the knee joint. You can bring the foot to the inner thigh. You can bring it to the calf, to the ankle. You can even rest the ball of the foot on the ground and the heel on the ankle if you're not feeling very stable today. And remember, just, if you're, just because you're feeling instable today potentially uh, it's not a forever thing right each day we just show up to the mat and we allow ourselves to show up however we are that's the work not judging ourselves, constantly practicing forgiveness of the self also not being too boastful about the self not having too much pride in what we can or what we can do any given day because the next day we may not be able to do it so just allowing the practice to unfold through us as it may any given day and then from here, we're going to draw the left knee forward and we're going to start to tip the heel up towards the ceiling 
torso forward in front of us and then you can extend the left leg back now if you are feeling quite unstable today no problem to release your hands onto two blocks to their highest height or anything block like so that you're in a supported warrior three now whether you're using your blocks or uh, keeping your hands lifted you can also bring the arms alongside of the body keep pressing through the big toe mound of the right foot to engage through the back side of that right leg and not to collapse into the right hip take one more full breath in through the nose strong through that standing leg steady as best as you can be and then soften your right knee step the left leg back into a crescent lunge inhale reach the arms overhead hook the thumbs pull the thumbs apart lift your chest bend your right knee to 90. to whatever degree you're comfortable you'll bend your left knee it may be a little baby bend and then you're going to extend and squeeze the cheeks to rise back to the top and then bend your front knee maybe that back knee lowers all the way down and then inhale squeeze the cheeks to rise to the top three more bending extending using the breath exhale to bend inhale extend last time exhale to bend inhale extend from here with straight legs scissor the thighs together reach the arms up plug the tops of the shoulders your traps down and then exhale open out to prepare for triangle grounding into the pinky edge side of the left foot arms reach out to the sides cut your hips back in space lengthen the right arm forward take a moment to hang in the balance here before you ground that right hand down just feel yourself being pulled in one direction being pulled in the other direction and you're finding a sense of centeredness through that polarity keep drawing in through the center and then finding strength in the center through that push and that pull through that polarity one more deep breath in and then exhale take the right hand down reach the left arm up gaze up breathe make sure you don't hyper extend that right knee keep a tiny micro bend behind the knee and you can also push into the big toe mound to engage more of the quad to prevent that knee from locking one more deep breath in and out inhale rise to stand up exhale bend into your right knee coming into virabhadrasana two and then we'll take the right forearm onto the right thigh left arm over the left ear you can stay here you can opt to get some shoulder mobility here circling the arm around you could also opt to go into any other variation of extended angle that you have you could reach the hand to the instep side of the leg you could go outside of the leg you could take a bind really just make it your own for two more breaths lunging 90 into that right knee sealing into the pinky side of the left foot push your right outer hip back in space wrap it back and feel the left front hip slightly wrap forward no matter what variation you're in and then on your inhale rise to stand up exhale parallel the right foot to the open space on the left side hands to your waist inhale lift the chest arch back exhale hinge forward from here you're gonna start to side lunge skandasana it's another nice place if you have your blocks you can place them beneath your hands and you're just going side to side optionally as you bend one knee the opposite toes can flip up you can go a little deeper into it but use your breath to get through it so the breath is one of the tools that we have to enable us to connect to the body to listen to the body and it's also that bridge from the head to the heart it's the bridge from the outer to the inner and so it has great potential to connect us to that which is constant steady and stable within us and not focused so much on all the exterior things that are shifting and changing all the time so let it be your constant throughout your practice okay and then let's go ahead and we'll come back center from here 
turn your right foot forward, bend the right knee, raise the left heel, and then we'll fold down into the right leg for Parsvottanasana. If you'd like to step the back foot in a little bit to ground the heel, that's an option. You can keep hands beneath, uh, blocks beneath your hands or not. But it is nice in order to have the experience of being grounded. The more we can actually hold ground, the more we'll have that experience. Meaning in every posture, the more of yourself that you can connect to the earth, that it is intended to be connected to the earth, the more steady you'll feel. So if you can connect entire palms versus just the fingertips, that can provide an extra layer or level of stability and groundedness into the pose. Keep wrapping your torso a little bit towards the right so you're framing the leg. Keep the shoulders soft. Breathe. One more deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And from here, bend into your right knee. Step your left foot forward. Bend both knees quite a bit. Rest the belly onto your thighs. Bring the forearms to the backs of the calves, hands to the backs of the ankles. So the more we connect to the body, the more current we move and the more stable we feel. So belly on thighs, hands to ankles, forearms to calves. Inhale, look forward, keeping all those points of contact intact. Tip the seat up and let the head soften down. So you may not extend the legs very much, but you want to extend only insofar as the belly and the thighs stay in contact. Right? Connection equates to stability and the feeling of stability in ourselves. And we want to feel stable in our surroundings. We want to feel stable within ourselves. Inhale, look forward, come to a flat back. You can release the hands. And then exhale, just let it go like a rag doll. Let the whole upper body release and soften once again. And then roll up to stand one vertebrae at a time. Once you're all the way up, roll the shoulders down the back. Find your mountain pose, right? Connecting to mountain is connecting to this unwavering, unshakable steadiness that's always accessible if we go within ourselves. So feeling that resolve, feeling that strength. Take one more deep breath in, embodying it in this posture. And a deep breath out. And mountain pose is the foundation for every posture we take. So seeing if you can carry that steadiness and that strength, that groundedness, that centeredness in every posture we take, even if it's a single-legged one. So with that, let's go ahead and shift into the left foot. You can hug the right knee into the chest. Left hand can come to the left hip. Right knee opens out to the side. You can take the hand to the ankle to place the foot along the inseam of your left leg. Anywhere works. Do not judge yourself if the ball of the foot is still resting on the ground and you have the heel on the ankle. Rather, acknowledge yourself by honoring what feels right today. And remember, it's all a changing thing. There are some days I have absolutely no balance. And there's so many different factors that contribute to it. And so you just let yourself show up as you are without judgment without shame, and just welcome all of yourself in every moment, in every practice. Okay, take one more deep breath in, and out. From here, we're going to draw the right knee center. Tip forward, kick your right heel up towards the ceiling, come to a flat back. And then if you'd like, you're welcome to release the hands onto some blocks. Kick your right leg back in space, flex through the foot. Try to wrap the right front hip slightly forward. Left outer hip up and back. Hands can stay at a prayer at your heart. They could reach forward overhead or alongside of your body. Try to wrap your left outer hip back by pushing into the big toe mound of the left foot, engaging through the posterior chain of the left leg, that backside. One more deep breath in. And then on the exhale, we're going to step the right leg all the way back to a long lunge. 
Inhale, reach the arms overhead. You can hook the thumbs or grab for opposite elbows. Do the opposite one, the one that you did not do before. Left knee bends to 90. Keep lifting the chest and the fronts of the hips. Remember, we want to keep those hip flexors nice and open, not in flexion. And then we'll bend the right knee as much as you're comfortable towards the ground. And then inhale, extend through both legs. Squeeze the cheeks to get to the top. And then bend the knees, lowering the right knee as much as you're comfortable towards the earth. Keep the left knee over the left heel the whole time. Inhale, rising up. Three more. Exhale to lower. Inhale, rising up. Exhale to lower. Inhale, rising up. Last time. Exhale to lower. Inhale, rising up. From here, reach everything up, extending through the arms, the legs. Plug the tops of the shoulders down. Scissor the inner thighs together. Another opportunity to connect to what center is in your body. And then exhale, open out to prepare for triangle. So you ground into the right heel. Arms reach out to the sides. Cut your hips back towards the right. Lengthen the left arm forward. Hang in the balance. And see if you can be okay in that balance. Try not to rush into the very next thing or wish that you were in the previous thing. Just let yourself be where you're at. Feel yourself being pulled in two directions. And through that polarity, you're pulling in and finding center, right? It's always like through friction or conflict that more resolve is found. We can get to know ourselves through challenging situations or through conflict, and we get to strengthen ourselves and our character in that very same way. It's always through like two opposing forces. So welcome the opposition and then pull into yourself through it and then we'll release that left hand right see it wasn't forever to the left shin right arm reaches up gaze up to see the right thumb keep a little softness in the left knee push into the big toe mound of the left foot and try not to collapse the chest forward really align over your left leg one more deep breath in and out Inhale, rise, press into the feet, stand up. You can elongate the stance to prepare for your Virabhadrasana too, long enough that you can bend your left knee to 90 degrees. Seal into the pinky side of the right foot. Arms reach out to the sides. Extended angle, you can either rest the left forearm onto the thigh and do this nice shoulder mobility practice with that right arm. Or if there is a different variation of extended angle that you'd like to work with, feel free to do so and feel free to switch it up. Once you pick one variation for this practice, at least, it's okay if you want to change and do a different one. Just trust the, the way that you are wanting to shift and wanting to change and allow for it and follow it. Take one more deep breath in wherever you are. And out. Inhale, press into the feet, rise to stand up. Exhale, parallel the left foot to the open space on the right side. Toes a little closer than your heels, hands to the waist. Inhale, lift the chest, arch back. Exhale, hinge forward. From here, you're going to walk the fingertips forward and then send the weight back into your hips. And we actually do want to be on the fingertips here because we're keeping all the weight back in the heels and the bum. So much so that you could actually lift your hands off the ground and it wouldn't really affect the sensations in the position, in the posture. So all the weight back in the hips and the heels, you're feeling a nice stretch through the whole backside of your legs, right? When we do the balancing stuff, we're really trying to strengthen that. And now we're looking to get that length in there. Always that balance, right? Even in the practice, the balance of strength and length and the combination of t the two makes us more well-rounded. Take one more deep breath in. And out, listen close. From here, you're going to take your left hand beneath the nose. You could use a block here. Right arm reaches up and back. Look up to see the right thumb. Now you're welcome to stay here or you can come a little deeper into a twist. You might even like to inch your feet a little closer together for more stability. You can optionally take the left hand to your right outer ankle 
You can optionally drape the right arm around behind you and either place the hand on the sacrum or reach your right hand for the left hip crease or inner thigh. You can optionally bend your left elbow a little bit, releasing more of the crown of the head to the ground, but spinning the left lung up and open towards the ceiling. Nice stretch here, nice twist. Two more breaths. And then if you're wound up, unwind, left hand down, right arm reaches up, and then swim that right arm forward. Take the right hand beneath your nose. Reach the left arm up and back. Look up to see the thumb. Lean into that right hand. Open through the chest. Now you're welcome to stay here. Optionally, you could drape the left arm around behind you, place it on the sacrum or grab for the right hip crease or towards the inner thigh. Optionally, the right arm can reach for your left outer ankle or uh, you could grab a little higher to the calf if you need to or if you'd like to. And then optionally, you can bend your right elbow, reaching the head closer to the ground, but then finding the rotation and spinning the chest up, right side of the lungs up towards the ceiling as you gaze past the left shoulder. One more full breath in and a full breath out. Unwind yourself if you're wound up. Come back center, hands beneath the shoulders. And then we'll go ahead and we'll turn the left toes forward. Bend your left knee. Look forward and then fold into the left leg. If you'd like to, you're welcome to step the right foot in. Parsvottanasana. Ground into the big toe mound of the left foot. Wrap your left outer hip up and back and lay your torso over that left leg. Let the head go. Let the shoulders relax. Breathe. Settle into yourself by settling into the breath. One more here. Okay, and then we'll go ahead, bend into your left knee, step the right foot next to the left. One more time, a little Uttanasana, uh, standing forward fold. It will feel a little different because now we've done both sides. Bring your belly onto the thighs. Bring the forearms to the backs of the calves, hands to the backs of the ankles. Inhale, look forward, open through the chest. And then exhale, tip the seat up, let your head release, fold down into the legs. Big breath. Shift a little weight into the fronts of the feet so you're not quite so heavy in your heels here. Three more breaths. And then you can release the hands down. Just take a moment to find the softness, to let it go. And then we'll heel toe the feet mat width apart and come into malasana, a squatting position. If you have a block that you'd like to sit on, you're welcome to bring the floor a little closer to you so you have uh, some more ground, some more support. Totally welcome to you. Up to you what you do. Extend the left arm in front of the left shin, palm presses out to the side, right arm reaches up and back, open the chest. If you wanna go a little deeper here, you're welcome to drape the arm around behind for a half bind. You can optionally thread the left arm in front of the left shin and reach it around behind you, latching the fingertips or grabbing for the right wrist for a full bind. We won't be here forever. Just take two more breaths. And then release, left hand down, right arm up. Inhale, come back center, hands to a prayer at the chest, switching sides. Exhale, right arm extends in front of the shin, palm presses out to the side. Exhale, left arm reaches up and back. You can stay here or optionally you can take a half or a full bind, gazing past the left shoulder, equally stepping into both feet. Make sure that the left foot has as much weight in it as the right. One more big breath in and out. 
Release the mind if you're bound. Inhale, come back center. And then very gently, you'll lower your seat to the ground. Bring the feet together. We're going to come into a little teepee twist. Wrap the left forearm around the shins. Look over the right shoulder, rotating around your trunk. Breathe. Right fingers level with your sacrum here. And then inhale, come back through center. Wrap the right forearm around your shins. Exhale, look over the left shoulder. Breathe. And inhale, come back center. From here, we're going to separate the feet parallel hip distance apart. Walk the hands behind you 10 inches. Fingers point forward. Inhale, puff up the chest. Exhale, chin towards the throat. Inhale, push into the hands and the feet. Lift your hips and only if comfortable, you can allow the head to release back for a reverse tabletop. Keep lengthening the tail towards the knees, sealing the entire surface of your palms and feet to the earth. Lift your chest, lift your hips a little higher, and then exhale, release down. Open the knees out to the sides if you'd like to. It's nice to sit on a blanket here, especially as if you try to sit up, you actually sit back. So feet press into each other, knees open out to the sides, move your chest forward, bend the elbows back and fold towards your legs. Think of folding with a flat back rather than rounding here. So think of your belly button reaching towards your toes and the chest coming forward to the space in front of your feet. Collarbones are open, shoulders are pulling back, elbows are drawing back. Breathe. Good. And then inhale, come to sit up. Extend the legs. Uh, knees together, come to lay on your back. Feet to the ground, parallel hip distance apart. Arms come alongside of your body, laying on your back. Okay, on an inhale, you're going to lift your hips up, coming into a bridge pose here. And then you can interlace the hands behind your back, clasping the elbows and shoulders close beneath you, tailbone lengthening towards the knees. If you feel open and you have a wheel practice, you are welcome to take the hands by the ears, elbows over the wrist, and lift into Urva Danyarasana. If that's not in your practice, don't even worry about it. Don't, don't even attempt. Just be content where you are. And then let's go ahead, release wherever you are, upper, middle, lower back to the ground. Windshield wiper the knees a little bit side to side. And then we're going to Cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Flex the right foot, pull your left knee into the chest. And coming in to thread the needle, your hands can thread underneath that left thigh. You can keep it static. You can just pull the left thigh in and pull the right knee away from you with a flexed right foot. Or you can even play around with rocking a little bit and see how that opens the hip joint. Keep the shoulders soft. Keep the breath deep. And then go ahead and place the left foot onto the ground. Take the right foot to the ground, switch sides, cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Flex the left foot, pull the right thigh into your chest. Interlace the hands beneath your right thigh. And then you can keep flexing the left foot, reaching the knee away from your center, pulling the right thigh into the center. And you can keep it still or you can play around with rocking. Just some gentle movement to invite a little more space. Use the breath to connect to your center, to connect to your calm. To land in the moment inside of yourself right now. Okay, and then you can take the right foot to the ground, take the left foot to the ground, hug the knees into the chest, make little circles on the sacrum, letting the whole lower back widen and release. Circle in the other direction. 
and then you'll drop the knees over to the left, scoot your hips over to the right, look out to see the right palm, knees to the height of the belly button, try to keep your right hip level, your, both of your hips level with the right shoulder. With every exhale, more of the right shoulder softens to the ground. Getting that little neck stretch by looking out to the right, breathe. And then switching sides, come back through center, shift your hips over to the left, drop the knees to the right, look out to see the left palm, left shoulder softens down. And really get that rotation through your trunk, get the twist through the rotation through the neck as you gaze out to the left fingers. Feel the earth rising to meet you so you can release into her support. And then let's go ahead, come back center, hug the knees into the chest. If there's any final poses you'd like to do in order to feel complete in your own personal practice, please do as you feel necessary. And then as you're ready, come take rest in Shavasana, final relaxation. So you can set yourself up so you're really comfortable. You could potentially place your pillow or your blanket beneath your knees. <sighs> and just let yourself rest and relax. And you can notice any places that have habituated tension in them and just consciously try to relax there, particularly paying attention to your shoulders, to your chest, to your hands and your feet, and to your jaw. Try to relax the face, taking off your mask and taking off your public persona, keeping it off and just letting yourself rest in your true nature. Letting yourself rest inside of your own body right now. You can allow for whatever is to be, both outside of you and inside of you. And just practice resting with what is. Trusting what is. And you're welcome to stay laying down and resting as long as you would like. We are um, going to end with a bit of a seated position so you can come out of your resting state if, if it calls to you. Otherwise, you can stay laying down and make your way back up into a comfortable seat, perhaps sitting on that blanket once again to elevate your base. And just close your eyes. Let yourself settle into where you are and how you are as you are. And just taking the time to care enough to notice, to be with yourself without the need to change anything. Change is inevitable. So just let yourself land where you are. And taking the time to care enough to notice. Paying attention if any shifts have occurred through the practice. And just being with that, being with those changes. Being with what is. Take a deep breath in and out. <sighs> One more in. Big release out, let it go. <sighs> Hands to a prayer at the heart. Namaste. Honoring yourself for your effort. Thanking your body and your mind for all that it does for you. Be well. Thank you again so much for taking the time to join. Such an honor and a treat to be with you guys. Again, I'm Danielle Karuna. You can find me on Instagram at Danielle Karuna or uh, my website, same name. Uh, and hopefully we'll do some more Manduka sessions together. All my love to you guys. <laughs>